Piers Plowman by William Langland. Passes 7. Truth heard tell of this, and sent word to Piers to take his team and till the earth, and procured him a pardon, a poenia et a culpa, for him and for his heirs for ever after, and bade him hold at home and plow his land, and any one who helped him plow or sow, or any kind of craft that could help peers, pardon with peers truth has granted, kings and knights that keep Holy Kirk safe, and in the realm rightfully rule the people, have pardon to pass through purgatory quickly, with patriarchs and prophets to be fellows in paradise. Those who've been blessed as bishops, if they embody what they should, and are expert in either law to preach each to the ignorant, in and inasmuch as they may amend all sinners, are peers with the apostles. Thus peers' pardon reads, And on the day of doom, at their days they will sit. Merchants in the margin had many years' grace, but the Pope would grant them no pardon, a poena et al copa, because they don't hold their holy days as holy church teaches, and because they swear by their souls, and so may God help them, against good conscience to get their goods sold. But under his secret seal, truth set them a letter and bade them buy boldly whatever best pleased them, and sell it again, and save such profit as they made, and have hospitals built with it to help the unfortunate, or apply it to repairing roads that are in poor condition, or to build bridges that have broken down, or marry off maidens, or make them nuns. Poor people beridden, and prisoners in stocks, Provide them with their food for our heavenly Lord's love. Send scholars to school or set them to the craft. Relie relieve religious orders and give them larger incomes. And I shall myself send you my angel Saint Michael, so that when you die no devil shall do you harm or scare you. And if you will work thus, I'll ward off one hope from you and send your souls in safety to my saints' joy. Then merchants were merry. Many wept for joy and praised Piers the plowman that procured them this bowl. Men of law at least pardon, believing nothing else, for the Psalter grants no salvation to such as take gifts, and especially from innocent people who purpose no evil. Thou shalt not take rewards against the innocent. Advocates should undertake to help them with their pleas. Princes and prelates should pay for their labor. From kings and princes will be their reward. But many a justice and juror would for John do more than pro dei pietate, plead at the bar. But he that spends his speech speaking for the poor man who is innocent and has need and is harming no one, he that comforts him in that case covets no gift from him, but for our Lord's love expounds law for him, no devil at his death day shall do him any harm, so that he will not be surely safe. The Psalter bears witness. Lord, who shall dwell in thy tabernacle? But to buy water or wind or wit or fire the fourth, these four the Father of heaven formed for this earth in common. These are truth's treasures to help true folk which will never wax or wane without God's words. When he draws near to death and would have indulgences, his pardon is most paltry at the parting hence that accepts from poor people any pay for his pleading. You lawyers and legal experts, if I lie, blame Matthew. Whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye to them. 
all living laborers that live by their hands, that truly take and truly earn, and live in love and in law for their low hearts, had the same absolution that was sent to peers. Of beggars and street beadsmen, the bull makes no mention unless there's a real reason that renders them beggars. For whoever asks a for alms unless he has need is as false as the fiend and defrauds the needy, and also beguiles the giver against his will. For if he were aware he was not needy, he would give his alms to another that was more needy. Thus the neediest should have help. Cato counsels me thus, as does the clerk of that Historia. Cui des videto is Cato's teaching, and in the Historia he tells how to bestow your alms. Let your alms remain in your hands until you are sure to whom you are giving. But Gregory was a good man and bade us give to everyone that asks us for his love that gives us everything. Do not choose whom you pity, lest by chance you pass over him who deserves to receive, since it is uncertain for whose sake you will please God more. For you never know who is worthy, but God knows who has need. The treachery is in him that takes, if betrayal is involved. For giving presence is repayment that brings the giver peace of mind. But the beggar is a borrower who brings more debt on himself. For beggars are borrowers whose bond is God Almighty to pay their debts to their donors, and, in addition, interest. Wherefore, then gavest thou not my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required it with usury? Therefore beg not, you beggars, unless it be for need, for whoever has where, wherewith to buy bread, the book bears witness. He has enough who has bread enough, though he has nothing more. He is rich enough who does not lack bread. It's a, con it's a comforting custom to read accounts of saints. The book curses all beggars and blames them in this way. I have been young and now have become old, and I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. For they live in no love and think no law binds them. They wed no woman with whom they deal, but like wild beasts with we he mount and go to work, and bring forth a brood that bear the name of bastard, or they break a child's back or a bone in his youth, and go forth as fakers with their brats forever and more after. There are more misshapen people among these beggars than among all other manner of men that move upon this earth. Thus they that lead their lives so may loathe the time that they were ever made men when they must go hence. But men old and hoary that are helpless of strength, and women with child for whom work is impossible, blind and bedridden and broken-limbed people who take their misery meekly, leper men and others, have as plenary pardon as the plowman himself. For love of their low hearts our Lord has granted them their penance and their purgatory in full plenty on earth. Peers, said a priest then, your pardon must I read, for I'll explain each paragraph to you and put it in English. And Peers unfolds the pardon at the priest's prayer, and behind them both beheld the bull. In two lines it lay, and not a letter more, and was worded this way in witness of truth. They that have done good shall go into life everlasting, and they that have done evil into everlasting fire. Peter, said the priest then, I can find no pardon here, only 
do well and have well, and God will have your soul, and do evil and have evil, and hope nothing else but that after your death day the devil will have your soul. And Piers, for pure wrath, pulled it in two and said, Though I walk in the midst of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I shall cease my sewing and not work so hard, nor be henceforth so busy about my livelihood. My plough shall be of penance and of prayers hereafter, and I'll weep when I should work, though wheat bread fails me. The prophet ate his portion in penance and sorrow, as the Psalter says, and so did many others who love God loyally, his livelihood comes easy. My tears have been my bread's day and night. And unless Luke lies, he finds another lesson for us in birds that are not busy about their belly joy. Nay, solikiti sitis he says in the gospel, and shows us examples by which to school ourselves. The fowls in the firmament who feed them in the winter. When the frost freezes, they for forage for food. They have no granary to go, but God feeds them all. What? said the priest to Perkin. Peter, it would seem you are lettered a little. Who lessened you in books? Abstinence the abbess taught me my ABC, and conscience came after and counseled me better. If you were a priest, Piers, he said, you might preach when you pleased, as a doctor of divinity with Dixit Incipiens as your text. Unlearned lout! said Piers, you know little of the Bible. Solomon's sayings are seldom your reading. Cast out the scorners and contentions with them, lest they increase. The priest and Perkin opposed each other, and through their words I awoke and looked everywhere about, and saw the sun sit due south at the time, meatless and moneyless on Malvern Hills, Musing on my dream, I walked a mile away. Many a time my dream has made me study what I was sleeping, if it might be so, and for love of Piers the plowman, most pensive in heart, and what a pardon Piers had for the people's comfort, and how the priest impugned it with two proper words. But I've no delight in dream lore, for it lets us down often. Cato and canon lawyers counsel us to cease, assigning certainly to dream lore for somnia ne cures. But because the Bible book bears witness how Daniel divinized the dreams of kings, Nebuchadnezzar, as these clerks name him, Daniel said, Sir King, your dream signifies that strange soldiers that shall come to seize your kingdom. Among lower lords your land will be divided. As Daniel divined, indeed it happened after. The king lost his lordship, and lesser men had it. Moreover, Joseph dreamed marvelously how the moon and the sun and the eleven stars all hailed him. Then Jacob judged Joseph's dream. Bayou fills, said his father, for famine we shall, I myself and my sons, seek you for need. It befell, as his father said in Pharaoh's time, that Joseph was justice with jurisdiction over Egypt. It befell, as his father said, his friends sought him there. All this makes me muse on dreams, and how the priest proved no pardon to do well, and deemed that do well bypasses indulgences. Biennial masses and triennial masses and bishops' letters. Do well at the day of doom is deferentially received. 
he passes by all the pardon of St. Peter's Church. Now does the Pope possess power to grant such a pardon, that people may pass without penance to joy? This is a leaf of our belief, as lettered men teach us. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, etc. And so I believe loyally, Lord forbid me otherwise, that pardon and penance and prayers will save souls that have sinned seven times deadly. But to trust these triennials, truly, I think, is not so certain for the soul, surely, as is, do well. Therefore, I admonish you men that have money on earth and trust through your treasure to have triennials, be you never the bolder to break the Ten Commandments, and mainly you masters, mayors, and judges that have the wealth of this world and are thought to be wise men, to purchase pardon and the Pope's bulls at the dreadful doom when dead men shall arise and all come before Christ and account to him how you led your life here and kept the letter of the law, what you did day by day the doom will record. A poke full of pardon here, nor provincial's letters, though you're found in the fraternity among the four orders and have indulgences double-fold, unless do well helps you, I count your patents and your pardon not worth a pie's heel. Therefore, I counsel all Christians to cry to God for mercy, and to marry his mother to be our mean between, that God gives us grace before we go hence to work such works while we are here, that after our death day, do well, will report at the day of doom, we did what he bade.